So what you're looking at right now is called a fractal, which is a mathematical monstrosity that comes from equations like this, this, and this. And with fractals, we can zoom into their infinite detail, monetize them on YouTube, and tattoo them onto our bodies. Personally, I got myself the animated version, which hurt a lot to get, but it wasn't as much pain as you're about to experience in this tutorial. We're going to be using some math, some coding, and some OSL shaders, which stands for overly complicated scripting language, to create this node which will let us control our fractal. So be warned, this is going to be a pretty complicated tutorial, so either learn the prerequisites or get ready to blindly copy some code. This isn't plagiarism, I swear. And when you're ready to devote your life to fractals, just grab a keyboard, grab some coding glasses, and grab the newest version of Blender so you two can spiral into madness in three, two, one. So as you hopefully know, a plane is made of a bunch of points, each with their own x, y coordinates, or with complex numbers, they each have some value x plus i, y. For example, this point represents one plus two i, this point represents negative two minus two i, and this point represents your skill in wonder, which is exactly zero plus zero i. And with complex numbers, we can easily add them by adding the real and imaginary components, multiply them by doing this thing, which gives us this result, and measure their magnitude using the Pythagorean theorem, which gives us the distance from the origin. Now going back to fractals, we're going to be using this equation to generate them, where different c values make different fractals, and here's how it works. Basically, z is going to be the point on the plane we're currently looking at, which we then square add and get an output for, and we then take this, plug it back into the equation, and get a new output and repeat this process over and over and over. And if at any point our magnitude becomes larger than some chosen threshold, we then stop this nonsense and assign our pointer color, which represents how many iterations this took. So a point that took lots of iterations will be closer to white, a point that took less will be closer to black, and when we do this for all our points, we're going to get a final image that looks like this, this, or this. And hopefully you got that all down so we can hop into Blender and do our OSL programming in 3, 2, 1. So with Blender open to racinate the default cube, replace it with a point and switch over to cycles with those cell enabled so we can actually see our script materials. Now in the shading workspace, we're going to toggle over to rendered mode, create a new material for our plane, and swap the principled BSDF node for a script node, which you can think of as a container for all the code we made. And this, of course, means we need to put on our coding glasses because it's time to start scripting. And to do this, just open up the text editor with all formatting options, create a new text file with a custom name, and import this into our script node. We're now going to create a new shader called Fractal, add in two float inputs for the real and imaginary components of our C, and initialize both of these to zero. And this gives us two inputs we can now play around with, but we're still missing the points from our plane and the output color of our fractal. And to fix this, we're just going to add our points as a parameter called position, create a color output called fractal color set to zero and refresh our node and hook it into the material output node. Finally, we need to program in our fractal equation, but before we do that, let's calm down, take a breath, and take a three second break to gather our thoughts. Okay, so we now need to add in our fractal equation, and to do that, just create some variables to store the points x, y coordinates, add in a simple for loop with some large number of iterations, and update our components using the fractal equation, which can be decomposed into a set of real and imaginary equations. And notice that currently after updating our real value, we're using this already overridden value to calculate our imaginary component, which is not what we want. Instead, we're going to store this in a temporary variable and use that for the imaginary component equation. Finally, add in an if statement to check if our current iterate has a magnitude larger than our threshold, and if so, set the output fractal color to be the current iteration over the total number of cycles. And CG Matter says it's okay to take off your coding glasses now because we're done scripting and have our completed fractal node. We can use the real and imaginary C sliders to control the type of fractal we get, add in some coordinates to move this around and zoom in, and send this through a color ramp node to control the color of our output. And there you go, another non-beginner friendly beginner friendly tutorial to study for months and months. I've been CG Matter, you've been you, Bye bye So because you watched my amazing video, I already know you love fractals myself and learning valuable skills online, which means you're going to love our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes, including material like Blender, coding, and tons of other useful subjects. For example, a course that I really liked was Logo Design with the King himself, Draplin, where he teaches you all the fundamentals you need so you don't end up with a horrible logo like this, this, or this. And with Skillshare Premium, you're going to get unlimited access to all classes and communities, meaning that you can fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career with an annual subscription at less than $10 a month. That's right, tons of classes, advice from the pros, and skills you can use to start freelancing, all with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month, and we haven't even gone to the best part yet. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can get a free two-month trial by using my link in the description. That's two free months of professional courses, skills you can gain, and learning you could be doing right now all by clicking the link below. So what are you waiting for? Go to the link in the description, pick up your two free months, and help support my Wonders Tutorial channel. Other than that, once again, I've been CG Matter, you've been you, Bye bye